Mm -hmm. All right, let's uh, talk on the phone now with the governor of New Jersey, Jim McGreevy, joining us now. Governor? Michael and Sean, good morning. Good morning to you, sir. You're uh, under a state of emergency. We've actually had a, a very good night. We brought it down to from 1 million uh, customers last night about 11 o'clock. We were down to approximately 350,000 customers without power. And now we're down to uh, literally in the past hour, we've gone down to 20,000. We're now probably down to 15,000 customers without power. And if I can, I just want to publicly thank all the PSENG workers who did an extraordinary job as well as uh, our state police, local police departments. Throughout the entirety of this process, all of our hospitals maintain generation and maintain power. Uh, we also, the, the night was very calm. Our neighborhoods were safe and secure. We deployed about 300 additional state troopers, as well as backup with 700 National Guard, most of which uh, were not deployed. And in addition, also in terms of transportation, we put 500 buses out on the road last night. No New Jersey resident was stranded. We got everyone home, obviously late, but we got it done. And this morning, New Jersey Transit, with the exception of the Hoboken line, is back up on uh, Saturday weekend schedule. Yeah, I hear PATH is doing fairly well too yes. this morning. Okay. Governor McGreevy, we got earlier reports this morning that the toll, uh, the tollways, that they, they, they weren't actually taking the tolls on New Jersey um, toll fares. Is that true? Is it yeah, still in that's, effect? That's probably going to be true for about another two hours. I mean, part of it was is that we just wanted to make sure that we move traffic as quickly and as readily as possible. And so we made the decision in the earlier hours not to uh, accept tolls, uh, particularly because we did go to a weekend schedule on New Jersey Transit, and we didn't want to inconvenience uh, customers, and we wanted to move traffic as quickly as possible. But, I mean, last night, in terms of the lessons from a 9-11, all the practices, all the, uh, you know, the, the practices that took place between Office Emergency Management, the State Police, the National Guard, Obviously, there was a great benefit because there was great coordination. And I'd also like to thank the patience of the public. People were extraordinary. I mean, strangers piling into cars, people driving strangers, literally in certain cases uh, from county to county to make sure that people got home. And as I said, no New Jersey resident was stranded. We ultimately got everyone home safely. You're listening to uh, Governor Jim McGreevy joining us uh, now on the phone. Governor, if I could ask you if you've had a chance to speak with uh, New York Governor uh, Pataki and if you have any indication at this point exactly what caused this problem. Well, our offices of emergency management have been speaking together, and I'll be speaking to uh, Governor Pataki today. I spoke to Governor Ridge last night, and obviously, one, we were concerned that it wasn't a terroristic attack, but two, after 1977, the system was designed to prevent this kind of cascading impact. And as we all understand, something clearly went terribly wrong. And so what we need right now is, is, is the kind of national leadership to, to make sure that we have the necessary protective firewalls so that we don't have this kind, kind of cascading impact, which would trigger such a significant blackout throughout such a large portion of the country. And in addition, as I said to Secretary Ridge, Tom Ridge, last night, uh, that we have a state of emergency, as does New York, and we're going to be looking to FEMA and a federal designation to try to recover some of the money for National Guard, for state police, for Office of Emergency Management, and local police departments, as well as private money uh, from the federal government. Governor, before you go, have you been able to get... Because all of the food establishments in Times Square are closed down. There was a soft serve ice, ice cream truck that tempted us for 10 minutes and drove away. Industrial trucks filled with bagels and milk and things like that uh, can't really find a place to deliver yet. So that is a tough situation, not just for the people who live and work around here, but also the people that come and visit Times Square from all over the world. I see traffic is a little bit of in a lull right now, but creates more walking room for people like this family that's visiting with me right now. Uh, give me your name, sir. Jan Geerdes. My name is Jan Geerdes. And where are you from? We're from Holland in Europe. And what are your son's names? Uh, this uh, is Bert Jan. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Good morning. Yeah, this is their first trip ever to New York City. What happened last night? Well, uh, we arrived at uh, half past four in the, in the afternoon yesterday, and we heard there was no power at all. So at first, it seems we uh, had to stay in the plane.
but uh, after a couple of hours we could uh, leave the plane uh, to the airport JFK and then we had to wait for five or four hours for a cab oh for a taxi God. but and I understand your hotel experience was a little better than other uh, people here other yeah. guests who had at least you got to spend a few hours in a hotel right yeah 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 we, uh, we got a very nice uh, cab driver he brought us to Manhattan he wasn't sure if he could make it make it but he brought us to the hotel here and then uh, uh, we couldn't get a room. You were at the W Hotel? W, no, the W Hotel, yes. And we couldn't get a room, so we could sleep in the lobby. There were a lot of people in the lobby, but there was no light, so it was very dark. And uh, in the midst of the night, about 2 o'clock, we, uh, we got the message that we can, can, could get uh, a room. So we got to the 8th floor. A room with no air conditioning. No air conditioning, and, no water. Uh, no water, no and, and your son is about to show us uh, the illumination that was provided. So. <laughs> And now is this the hotel staff that gave you this? Yes. And you walked up eight flights of stairs with us? Yeah. And back. Are you ever going to forget uh, your trip to New York City? Never. <laughs> but do you regret coming to New York? Uh, it's too warm here, uh, no air conditioning, and uh, well, yeah, it's uncomfortable. Well, I promise our mayor rather promises that as the day progresses, it's going to improve um, somewhat. Now, also, I understand you have your walking shoes on yeah, yeah. because there's no transportation. The subway's not working. No, no, no. There's nothing is working. So, but we used a lot. We used to, to, to get uh, walking here. Okay. And the, the main thing now is to find some something to eat for breakfast. And uh, All right. well, I heard it will be difficult. Well, proving my point that people here are looking for breakfast and we want to, well, you know, quite a welcome, but of course it'll improve as the day progresses. Thank you very much for visiting with us. And don't lose that illumination. You never know. You never know you'll need it again. And thank you very much, guys. Enjoy your trip. And of course, as you can see, people have been in and around Times Square all night and now all morning long uh, trying to get around, trying to get breakfast. And we did get some of the tease of uh, some lights coming on. And then the progression stopped. And uh, apparently the power. Uh, progression has stopped here in Times Square. Again, Mayor Bloomberg was quoted as saying, tomorrow we will be back up to business as usual. He said that yesterday. We are still waiting for that to happen. And ex-Mayor Giuliani had hit the streets already and had said to, to New Yorkers, take it in stride. Our Dutch family is doing the same thing. They'll be striding, walking the streets of New York. Many of us will be doing the same until the subways and other forms of transportation are up and running. Live in Times Square, Mario Bosca, CBS News this morning. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Mario. You know, we can show you why it's better to walk than telling you. The pictures say it all. Jim Smith is in Chopper 2, right outside Lincoln Tunnel. Nice and crowded there. Yeah, that's right, Sean. We're on the New Jersey side of the Lincoln Tunnel, and there's a bit of a bottleneck, more than it would be on a normal morning. We have only two lanes open getting into the city as opposed to the normal three that you would see in addition to the bus lane. Uh, part of that was to help alleviate getting the traffic out of the city. So if you're traveling into New York from New Jersey, you will have only two lanes available. And as you can imagine, as you're seeing right here on your TV screen, heavy delays. Now this is what would normally be about a 40 to 45 minute delay, but factor in that there are only two out of the three lanes that are normally open. That would make the delay probably closer to an hour. The same type of delay down at the Holland Tunnel, about a 45 minute delay. The George Washington Bridge was not that bad, but again, all the more reason why you should try to leave the car at home. As we've been mentioning, New Jersey Transit, most of their lines will be running on a limited weekend schedule. Now, for those of you in northern New Jersey that are affected by the uh, by the train service that don't have train service in northern New Jersey, you can take a New Jersey Transit bus. They will be traveling into the city and dropping you off outside of the Port Authority. And again, as we mentioned earlier, another option are the ferries. New York Waterway is running full surface, as is the Staten Island Ferry. For those of you traveling from central New Jersey, maybe hop over to Staten Island and catch that Staten Island ferry. Again, all ferries will be on full service, so do what you can to leave the car at home. If you do try to drive into the city, you're going to find extra delays. Sean and Michael, back to you. All righty, Jim, thanks very much. Uh, just getting word from LIPA, Long Island, the power there. Suffolk County reporting now 85% of the customers in Suffolk have their power back on. And here in New York City, uh, the Office of Emergency Management says 20% mm -hmm. of our power has been restored. Um, we are anticipating a press conference with Mayor Bloomberg at 8 o'clock. Hopefully he'll be able to update us on exactly what the situation is, possibly what caused this power outage, when the power will be restored. And I think a real interesting point is about a lot of people, especially tourists or those who are stranded in the city, can't find 
anywhere to eat yeah. because most of the restaurants have been forced to close down because when you lose the, the electricity, your food has to be kept at a, a certain uh, storage point, whether cold or hot, or otherwise it's deemed unsafe to eat. So a lot of these restaurants have to, or grocery stores, have yeah. to throw the stuff away. Well, you know what, you get a little chance to, to hop in a couple of these places, especially uh, where Amy Stone is in uh, Manhattan, because you might be able to pick up, you know, a bag of chips or something non-perishable. You can always pick up something there. And Amy, you almost have half a smile going. Yeah? Well, you know what? Some nice guy brought me a cup of coffee. Wasn't that sweet? Very that was nice. nice. If somebody else could bring me a muffin, I would really appreciate <laughs> it. Anyway. <laughs> Actually, I'm right in front of the Duane Reed, which says open 24 hours, and it's closed, and it's been closed uh, for the past whatever. We've been here for about eight hours, and it's been closed, and everybody keeps pounding on the door saying, I just need this one thing, and they just can't do it because their computer system is down. But on this side of 57th and Broadway, there is power in this area between 52nd and 59th and Broadway and 5th Avenue, there is power. But you go across the street over here and there is nothing. The traffic signals are working over here, but right down one block, they are dead. Um, and everything is pretty peaceful right now. It's starting to get a little more congested. People actually trying to go to work. We ran into Jonathan, who's actually supposed to move today. Yes, hopefully that will happen. But whatever happens, happens at this point. And you're moving from what? What area to what area? 57th and 10th to 56th and 10th. One short block. Both without power. You might want to move to like 57th and Broadway. You might want to change your mind. I think we might come over here, just camp out on the street, hang out, get free coffee too. So poor Jonathan's been sitting on the stoop here at Dwayne Reed. He wants to get a cordless phone because, as we've all learned, many of us have learned who are out of power that uh, cordless phones, you need to have some kind of landline phone in a closet somewhere. You need to have extra batteries. What did this whole power outage teach you? Don't pack in advance. Leave everything till the last <laughs> minute. Save it because you're going to need it one day. Yeah, you ran out of candles? Nothing. It was all packed in the new apartment, brought over by hand, so we had nothing. But I, I mean, I really, I noticed like I didn't, my alarm clock, I, I didn't have batteries for my alarm clock. Oh, you know, nothing. nothing. Who would have ever thought? I mean, you just never think about something like this. So, you know, it just goes to show just keep batteries around and always be prepared. Well, good luck today. I hope everything goes well. Thank you very much. A lot of people also are coming up to us and asking us about ATM machines, and there is one around 57th and Broadway that is working right now. Actually, uh, I might hit it right after this hit. Um, but as I said before, there is power around this area. Everybody's all excited. But uh, again, not a lot of restaurants are open around here. I think there's a one, one restaurant opening uh, open down the street that's serving coffee, and that's about it. Live in Midtown, Amy Stone, CBS 2 News this morning. Back to you. Oh, very hungry, Amy Stone. Thank well, you, Amy. You know, there's other problems. Subway. No subway service. That's where we have McGee Hickey. She's at Penn Station. McGee, I, I know it. I heard that it's smoking hot in those train stations. It is very hot downstairs in Penn Station, but it's, it's relatively cool and pleasant up here. So a lot of people have come up here. They've gathered around our um, TV monitor here to get the latest information from CBS 2 News this morning. And we do have relatively encouraging news for people here. If you've been waiting 15 hours for a train to move anywhere outside of New York City, there is some movement to report. There are trains right now heading to Long Branch, Dover, and Trenton. So New Jersey Transit does have limited service. They say they're on their limited Saturday schedule. There also is one Amtrak train, the 815, leaving for Albany. So that's very good news for people trying to get to Albany. And probably the best news, because the, the largest number of people I've run into are trying to get to Long Island, is that there are now shuttle buses leaving from right around the corner here at 32nd and 7th Avenue. Shuttle buses taking people to the Jamaica station where they will not have a train yet. They will then take other buses to different parts of Long Island. And I just spoke to some people waiting on that line. They, they weren't even sure where the line was going. They just said they saw a line, they got on it. They're so eager to get out of Midtown Manhattan and get headed towards home in Long Island. They just can't wait to, to move out of Manhattan and try to be headed home. Um, let me just talk to some of the people here waiting to get home. Where are you trying to go? Uh, New Haven. And you seem like a very patient person. Have you heard any word about when you can get an Amtrak? Are you waiting for Amtrak, right? No, I'll just hang out here with several million of my new friends until okay. something happens. And they have become friends, right? I mean, people have really had a positive spirit here, right? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, you know, making the best out of the situation. And, and believe me, there's nothing coming down. It could be rain, snow, right. fire, brimstone. <laughs> or really humid and hot like it is down right. inside I mean, Penn State. The weather's cooperated, and it wasn't bad at all last night, really. And you and have enough food? Oh, geez. There, yeah, we can eat. Yeah, there's a hot dog vendor here, okay. the I Red got, Cross. I've got here. a couple of pounds that I can, that I can give up. Well, 
It's always good to eat. Every three hours. Don't, don't die it now. It's not the time. But good luck to you. I hope Thank you get you. there to New Haven. Where are you trying to get to? Wow. I'm trying to get to Hillside, Queens. Um, I got stuck on the train yesterday when this whole thing happened, like about 4.10 in the afternoon. And uh, I was sitting on the train for like three hours. Uh, we got off the F train at uh, Broadway in uh, Lafayette. I walked uptown and I had to spend the night in, in, in New York. I had to sleep on the steps there. I was going to walk to Hillside, but logic took over and I said to myself, there's no way I'm going to get there in the dark. It's right. just not going to happen. So how about if you take a shuttle bus to Jamaica and see if you can get another bus to Hillside? I'm going to give that a shot. I'm going to take a shuttle bus to Jamaica. Right now, I just want to wake up because I've been sleeping on the steps right. all night, so oh, I'm exhausted. Okay. You see there is some coffee over there. Red Cross yeah, has I'm going to run over and okay, grab some so coffee. Get your <laughs> cup of coffee and then be prepared to stand on a very long line around the corner at 30 seconds. That's why I'm take my time, relax. I mean, it's New York. We've been doing really good. Uh, this is the third blackout I've lived through. So everybody was pretty cool. Everybody got along. Everybody chipped in, you know, helped each other out, got water, got food. So New Yorkers are very cool. Since 9-11, a lot of things have happened to us. You know, we've been through a hectic time. But we're New Yorkers. We're survivors. This is the energy of this city. I'm born and raised here. I know. So I grew up here. I know. We can take care of anything. People get together. Everybody's been good. Black, white, Hispanic. No problems. Everybody's been doing good. So, you know, New York is the place to be right now. Right. But home is the place to be, Home too. is the place to be. So go get your cup of coffee. Get online for the bus, and I hope you get home to Hillside. Thank so. you very much. Thank, Thank you, you for sharing all that. Other people want to tell me where you're headed? I'm headed right here in the city. I'm not going nowhere. But where are you trying to get to? Oh, Jamaica, Queens, too. Jamaica. Okay, yeah. so you know where the buses are, right over on 32nd and 7th? Yeah. You can get a bus there to okay. Jamaica. Sound good. Okay. Thank okay, you. where are you trying to go? Brooklyn. Brooklyn. Yeah. And how are you going to get there from here? I don't know. Just going to have to wait it out. Oh, okay. Well, the subways are going to be six to eight hours from serving you, so uh, better think of another way. I'm going to try. Okay. okay. <laughs> I've been sleeping here all day. Well, that's the situation from here at Penn Station. Back to you guys at the uh, studio. Some folks in some fairly good spirits. Some. Some. Want but I think in. that it's it's quickly wearing on those who have been oh. outside on the streets all day long. One of the areas, though, that have seen the most area of improvement as far as restoration of power, Suffolk County. Yeah, Suffolk County now reporting apparently 85% of uh, LIFE of customers have had their power restored. And joining us now on the phone is the Suffolk County Executive, Robert Gaffney. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? We're well. How are you doing out there? Well, we're doing okay at this point. We've got uh, the majority, the vast majority of the power restored to the residents. Uh, uh, all of our public facilities, all the critical emergency facilities are operating mostly on uh, on regular power, some still using some, uh, some emergency generating. But uh, uh, our biggest problem at this point, uh, traffic signals and um, and making sure that, uh, uh, and, and of course the, the, the difficulties occasioned by the, uh, the Long Island Railroad not running, that creates some issues for us. But we're in pretty good shape at this point. We expect that uh, we'll probably have the majority, you know, the, most of the power back uh, or almost all of it back within uh, within a matter of hours. Mr. Gaffney, why do you think that Suffolk County has been so, uh, was able to so quickly restore much of its service, whereas other areas are slowly beginning to recover? Well, you know, it, it, I, I set, my sense is that part of the the, 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 the the reason why we have power at this point is we've had issues with uh, uh, large power plants, and so we have a um, we have a host of smaller turbine plants, a lot of uh, other kinds of, you know, uh, energy sources throughout the county. Uh, and that served us well in this kind of a situation because we can get them up fast and get things back online. Um, and we have some, you know, larger power plants that are baseline plants that we've used in reserve. So these can be activated. Um, and, and LIPA does a terrific job. I mean, I can't say enough about uh, Long Island Power Authority. Uh, and Keyspan, the people who contract with LIPA to operate our system, they've done a magnificent job. Um, so we've been well served by this whole process. You talked a moment ago about the uh, difficulties regarding the LIRR. Have you had a chance to speak with the folks there, and what are they telling you about when they uh, assume that uh, service might be restored? Well, I'm in the Emergency Operations Center for Suffolk County. We have representatives from the Long Island Railroad and from the MTA police here. And they indicated at this point that um, that it's going to be a while before uh, uh, service is resumed. Uh, they don't anticipate that it would be resumed, uh, you know, uh, in the near future. Uh, probably late today, early tomorrow at the earliest. Um, we have 
Uh, we've used Suffolk Transit buses and have uh, put contract vendors, uh, bus vendors, contractees with whom, with whom we deal in contact with the MTA to help uh, pick passengers up from Jamaica and transport them back to Suffolk stations. But um, you know, it's a, it's a, it's it's an arduous process. There are people who have been uh, stranded in Jamaica for uh, since last night uh, that, that are just now beginning to get home. So. Uh, that's probably one of the most difficult parts. The other problem we're going to be facing down the road, and this is what the MTA police were telling us, is that uh, even if power goes back online, uh, signal, uh, signals have to be adjusted. Uh, there's a lot of work that has to be done before the trains can be put through. And the crossing gates um, uh, don't often, uh, you know, very often they won't work uh, even when the power gets back and they have to be manually adjusted. So. Uh, it'll probably be through the weekend before the MTA, uh, the Long Island Railroad, resumes its normal service. All the way through the weekend, then. Well, wow. before everything is done. I mean, sure. this is Friday. It's going to be into tomorrow, I'm mm -hmm. sure, before they can uh, go and check each signal crossing, go on each switch. All of those things have to be checked. You had mentioned a moment ago that uh, some of the uh, smaller roads had some signal problems, and that's to, certainly to be expected. But your major arteries especially the LIE, how are they holding up and what are you hearing? Uh, they're doing fine and because they don't rely on traffic signals, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, the biggest problem for us are the large intersections where um, state and county roads converge, um, where there's uh, an intricate process of, of signal uh, direction. So those, we have Suffolk County police officers um, uh, manning those intersections, directing traffic along with Suffolk County deputy sheriffs and uh, Suffolk County Park Police and representatives from the pub, uh, public safety uh, units of the various towns. So we, we're getting through it fine at this point. Um, um, even though the power goes on, it still sometimes takes a while to get the signals adjusted. So sure. it'll be a while before everything is, is squared away. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. We certainly do appreciate it. Suffolk County Executive Robert Gaffney giving us the latest from uh, his area. 85% of the customers there are now seeing their power restored and doing fairly well by comparison. Yeah. Well, time now is 6, or rather 7.28. Uh, you're watching an extended version of our uh, Power Outage 2003. Uh, we just spoke with Mr. Uh, Gaffney, and he had expressed that the LIRR, it's possible it may not even be fully restored until throughout the week, into yeah, the weekend, yeah. maybe late sa mid Saturday. He didn't really give us a, a definitive answer, but definitely it's going to run into the weekend. Um, in New York City, the Office of Emergency Management confirms that 20% of the electrical power has been restored in New York City. Our reporters out in the field have confirmed, eyewitnesses tell us, Parts of Southeast Bronx has power, parts of Westchester, uh, parts of Staten Island, parts of Queens. Um, Governor McGreevy, we just spoke with uh, less than five minutes ago, expressed that much of the power, almost all of it, is restored in New Jersey. Yeah, he's feeling somewhat confident. A different situation here. Let's just get you caught up on the headline, really, at this hour of the morning. If you have some place to go, work, or wherever, you'll want to know about transit and transportation. And quickly, the airports are open. Everybody tells us, the big three anyway, that uh, they're fully operational, but expect delays. Call ahead. New Jersey Transit Path Service, Path Service particularly, running on a regular schedule, but you're always going to want to check in with that. And uh, Governor McGreevy also feeling uh, pretty, pretty good about the way transit's working there. The tolls, by the way, in New Jersey are... Lift it. They're frozen for at least the next two hours. So you catch a break there. Ferry service is fully operational, and the subway service, as you know, Oh, it's not good. Yeah, it's not going to be good for a while. Mayor Bloomberg talking about it a moment ago as well. But the buses are running. What's that? The buses are running, as are the ferries. That's right. Mm -hmm. Ferry service is good to go. And also, in regard, by the way, to the subway service, we should just tell you that it's out clearly for a while. And even when power is fully restored, it's going to be another six, eight hours, they tell us, before they are confident that it's safe enough and then, you know, everything is running so that they can let you back on. And we're expecting a press conference with uh, Mayor Bloomberg within the next 30 minutes at 8 o'clock. But our Carrie Line, who's outside City Hall, was able to get an exclusive interview about the state of what we're in and when power will be restored. Uh, this is what the mayor had to say. Mayor, what can you tell New Yorkers this morning? We've been on for 24 hours. We just want to give them at least some new news. We know that there's been some... There is, I think, has got the transmission facilities all back up, and now they're bringing on the generation capacity. And uh, it took a little longer than they thought, but uh, there was no damage done to our system. And during the day, it should all be coming back on. It's going to be a tough commute. I think essential service personnel should come in and then use your judgment. If you have to take a Friday off in the summer, isn't the worst thing, but uh, everything is fine. The city was quiet overnight. 
uh, normal kinds of incidents, uh, nothing really worse than that, and uh, people should conserve energy today. It's going to be a normal time in the summer when the, we're uh, always stretching our power supply. Have a good day. What time do you think? Parts, lots of New York is already on. Parts are not. Thank you, sir. Again, Mayor Bloomberg is expected to uh, start a press conference at 8 o'clock. We, of course, will carry that live. He also said, and this is just, uh, he's hoping that you will use 911 only for emergency calls if you have questions about what's going on with power or a non-emergency situation in your neighborhood, call 311. That's if you have a phone service. Some areas do. Mine didn't. <laughs> yep, that's hit and miss. It really is, and that's just the way it's going to have to be, I guess, for a little while. Something else hit and miss, of course, is the uh, the traffic situation. Vanessa's going to get us up to speed on that. Yeah, we definitely, uh, if you don't have to head out, definitely the best thing is to stay at home, try and keep cool, because it's going to be a tough ride in. Mass Transit, of course, the big story. Subway's not in operation once the power's up, six to eight hours. LIRR, pretty much the same story uh, there. Until power comes on, it's still going to be six to eight hours after that for that to get fully operational. Metro North, uh, extremely limited schedule, and uh, New Jersey Transit. We'll talk about that in just one minute, but we want to talk about the New York City bus transit. Uh, 63 bus routes have been prioritized. Now, we're going to start you in Manhattan. Uh, the M1, 2, and 3, and 4, the M6, the M10s, and 20, uh, M11, M14D, and 15 Limited, M42, the M60, which uh, just as a note is between Manhattan and LaGuardia, an important bus for, for some people there, is uh, prioritized as far as service goes. The M100, M101, and the M104. Let's see if we can go and check out Staten Island now. City bus routes there prioritized. Victory Boulevard, Richmond Avenue, Forest Avenue, Richmond Road, Highland Boulevard, Arden Avenue. And uh, let's head out to another area and we'll see what else we have in Manhattan. Uh, some bus routes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 on the avenues. Uh, Lexington Line, Broadway, 14th, 42nd, and 125th Street buses. And we're also going to head into Queens. The buses that are prioritized there, Northern Boulevard buses, Merrick, Parsons, Queens Boulevards, Sanford, Roosevelt, Hillside, Jamaica, Metropolitan Avenues, Union Turnpike and Main Street buses. And we're also going to head into the Bronx, Fordham Road buses, Jerome Avenue, Pelham Avenue, Tr Tremont Avenue, Grand Concourse West. East 167th Street, West 181st Street, East Gun Hill Road, Webster Avenue, and 3rd Avenue buses. And in Brooklyn, it's Fulton Street, Church Street, DeKalb, Utica, Nordstrand, Flatbush Avenue, Williamsburg, Manhattan Bridge, 5th Avenue, Coney Island, Shore Road, and Cropsey Avenue buses are the buses that are prioritized. And as far as priority goes, they're saying these are the buses that will have near normal service on them, if possible, extra service. Now, other bus routes may be available, but it'll definitely re be reduced service. So they're not guaranteeing those. And you can also see uh, lots of extra passengers. You're not guaranteed a seat on the bus because they are telling us they only have about um, the capacity for half of the usual travelers or passengers. So you couldn't counter delays. Ferries also are open, but the same story there. You couldn't counter some slowdowns or delays there as far as depending on how many people head out to use the ferries. Pass trains, we're being told, are looking good on a regular schedule, but same story. You might want to call ahead on that as well. Now, as far as New Jersey transit buses go, let's get the rundown, or rather, uh, trains go. Let's get the rundown on how, and buses. Limited bus service into New York City to 8th Avenue and 40th Street. The Port Authority is still closed. So you're going to be dropped off uh, on 8th Avenue and 40th Street. South Jersey buses on a regular service. North Jersey buses on a limited schedule. Atlantic City Rail Line is operating on a regular service. Uh, not operating. The Maine, Bergen County Line and Port Jervis Line are not operating. Montclair Booten Line not operating. Pasquick Line not operating. Morris and Essex Line are operating on a Saturday schedule with no service to uh, west of Dover. Northeast Corridor is also on a Saturday schedule with no service at Jersey Avenue. And the North Jersey Coastline is on a Saturday schedule as well, but no service to or from Hoboken. Raritan Valley Line Saturday schedule, no service to or from Hoboken. Hudson Bergen Light Rhine, li Light Rhine? Rail, light rail. <laughs> there we go. It's early. Well, you've had a lot to say. <laughs> I've had limited sleep this evening also. And Newark Subway uh, are in regular service as well. Rail and bus tickets uh, or those uh, are being cross-honored. So you can use your rail pass on the buses 
and uh, vice versa on the past trains as well. Now, if you're going to be brave and opt to drive into New York City, as far as your crossings go, the uh, Hudson and East River crossings are open, but we're already seeing big delays on the uh, Hudson crossings. The Lincoln, we just got an update from Jim Smith a short while ago. He was saying up to 45 minutes to an hour because one lane is also down there. So already traffic stacked there. Holland Tunnel story, quite the same. Big delays. GWB, uh, about a 30-minute wait on the upper deck. Lower level looking good. But once you're in Manhattan, also, you have to watch out because a lot of the traffic lights still aren't working as well. So you definitely have to proceed with some extra caution. In New York City, alternate side of the street parking rules are suspended, which uh, Incidentally, they were suspended. It was a religious observance today, so they already planned to be suspended. But um, meter parking rules still apply. It has to which, be the meters through it all, which right? Which I was very unhappy to hear about because yeah. I'm parked at a meter. But well, we were talking about that before. They're the prime spots now because so many garages still can't open with the electric gates and whatever. So the folks are going to be, built, you know, right. digging for quarters like, oh, get out. It's definitely going to be tough. Again, stay at home, enjoy your day off. Friday off in the summertime. Extended weekend sounds well, good to me. Best advice. Yeah, but for those folks who are insisting on coming to work, well, a lot of them are walking. And if you go on the west side where our Amy Stone is, where the electricity is on, you may need a bottle of water. Stores may have electricity, but Amy doesn't necessarily mean they're open. Hey, remember I asked for a muffin? Somebody brought me a muffin. George, my cameraman, brought me a muffin. That was nice. Well. Uh, now I'm all set. I got my coffee, I got my muffin. This is a great job. And I got lights. I'm one of the only areas in Manhattan that has lights. Um, we are at 57th and Broadway, and actually from 52nd to 59th, from 5th Avenue to Broadway, that area has lights. They've had lights for a while now, several hours, and everybody else on the other side of the street over there, on the other side of 57th and Broadway, is without electricity um, for right now. Now, we ran into Georgie, and Georgie told me everybody has their own story of uh, chaos that they've gone through. You're from Chicago. You came here to celebrate your sister's birthday, and you walked from South Street Seaport all the way up to Midtown? Yeah, 70 blocks, uh, all in one walk. We didn't stop and take a break or anything. Well, it's a good way to see the city, huh? Oh, yeah. I've seen New York at this point, and I'm very happy. I didn't have, it didn't bother me that the uh, power went out. It was great. I thought it was a great experience. <laughs> you are such an optimist. We should all feel like you do. Um, how, how was your night, though, sleeping-wise? I didn't have any problem. I know about 4 o'clock it got very light in the room because the, uh, because the uh, lights came back on. I was real happy, but I went back to sleep so I can uh, go and enjoy Central Park my last day. Now you ran, you, you walked 70 blocks and then you look like you're about to go for a run right now. Oh yeah, I'm getting ready to go for a run. I love Central Park. I love New York. So. And I'm about to eat a muffin. <laughs> <laughs> I should okay. be joining you. Oh, well, yeah. enjoy yourself in New York. We're happy you're here and come back and visit us again. All right. Thank Take you care. So Thanks, much. Georgie. Okay. Really, I've met so many nice people this morning and everybody has really had a great attitude about what they've gone through uh, in the past 24 hours. We met one guy who was a hero. He carried down a co-worker who was five months pregnant with twins. He carried her down 23 flights of stairs. He was talking about that this morning. He lives in Long Island. I don't even know if he's home yet, but hopefully he is. And uh, But so far right now, we are here on the corner. Everybody's going to this Duane Reed, hoping that it'll open up soon, and hopefully it will, but right now it's closed because their computers are down. The ATM machines are working in this area right here if they're not out of money because people are lined up at them. And um, the grocery store across the street is open. Of course, a lot of the, the food has had to be just had to be thrown away, but um, I guess there are drinks and muffins that are okay. We're live in Midtown. Amy Stone, CBS 2 News this morning. Back to you guys. All right. Thank you, Amy. Uh, obviously, the big question today is how are you going to get to work if you don't have the luxury of walking? Mass transportation is the only option. The uh, spokesperson for the Transit Authority, Mark Gross, who joins us on the phone live right now. Good morning, Mr. Gross. Good morning. Obviously, um, only 20% of the uh, electrical service has been restored in New York City. We do know that the buses are running. Uh, other than that, there's really not that, more, that many more options outside of the ferry. Unfortunately, no. We, we cannot restore subway service until all of the power has been restored. So we will be running buses, but on a limited basis. We're running approximately 63 routes. I understand that you had to uh, prioritize those routes. Which ones are getting the emphasis and which ones are being um, not getting that much attention today? We're, we're uh, giving major emphasis to the routes that serve major corridors, uh, such as the Grand Concourse in the Bronx, Westchester Avenue, Fordham Road, um, in Brooklyn, Fulton Street, Church Avenue, DeKalb, 
and in Manhattan, 5th Avenue, 6th Avenue, Central Park West, 9th Avenue, and those are just a few of the 63 routes that we will be serving. We understand the buses are running, Mr. Gross, but obviously you've got to pack some patience this morning. What kind of delays are you seeing so far? Well, we, we are seeing some delays, uh, quite naturally. Uh, again, we're only running approximately uh, a quarter of our bus routes. So we are going to see uh, extensive delays. We just ask people to be patient and, um, you know, just stay calm. If you don't have to travel, please don't. Any particular bus route has the most serious delays right now? Um, none that we can tell so far. It's, it's still early. So uh, they're, they're still running the buses, and people are getting on the buses. And, and so far, things seem to be running quite smoothly. Are you going to add extra? Um, are, are you're, it's abbreviated schedule. When will it resume back to normal? Uh, we don't know that just as yet. Well, Mr. Gross, we certainly uh, appreciate your time. Uh, thanks again for your time this morning, and obviously if anything changes, uh, please let us know as soon as possible. I sure will. Okay, well time now is 7.42. It's 74 degrees outside. McGehee has been outside Penn Station where the subways are not running, but the buses are. And McGee, uh, some buses have started to come in that area. Folks leaving yet? Yes, I mean, throughout the night, Sean, as you know, there was always a very large crowd of people behind me waiting for the latest word. Luckily, fortunately, that crowd has diminished because so many people are headed home right now. The major push was that a lot of people jumped on these shuttle buses to take them, them to the Jamaica station in Queens, and there they'll take other buses that will be the substitute for the Long Island Railroad, and they'll be finally headed home to their homes in Long Island. We also have good news to report on New Jersey Transit. A lot of those trains are running. We'll get more on that in just a minute, but I also do want to say there is that one train going to Albany on the Amtrak line, 815. That's headed there, but it's very slow on Amtrak. With me now is Alan Weinberg from New Jersey Transit, who can tell me that you are, you do, you are running a lot of trains out of here right now. We are having some success, and I want to thank our customers for sort of heeding the warning uh, of the difficulty of today. Last night was a really a tremendous effort on behalf of our customers to try and get home and our staff to try and make that happen, a rescue effort that really came together well. I think people heeded that warning. We were careful in what we promised for today in terms of having Saturday service on some selected lines where we had power. We're able to meet uh, what we said we would do. We're still having some trouble on our Hoboken lines, which is Pascack Valley, Maine, Bergen, uh, Port Jervis, uh, Montclair, Booton area. So uh, we are uh, we are making some progress in what's a difficult situation. Specifically, what lines are running? Our northeast corridor line between Trenton um, and New York City here is running, with the exception of uh, stopping at uh, Jersey Avenue Station. Um, our North Jersey coastline, which runs all the way down from the shore up towards here, is running on a Saturday schedule, um, although there's no connecting uh, service to uh, Hoboken. Our Raritan Valley line, which runs from Newark uh, all the way out the Raritan Valley, uh, Valley on west, uh, is running. So we're having some success, and we're hoping that the people that are using this service are using it because they really need to get somewhere or they're trying to get home. Today is really probably not the best day to be out there traveling uh, just for any reason. And as Governor McGreevy said, it's really probably better to just stay home unless you have something really important to do. How about the New Jersey Transit buses? How are they running? We're operating on a limited schedule. Obviously, we're having more difficulty in North Jersey and New York City. Um, I understand we are running buses into Port Authority bus terminal, which is closed, so we'll be letting people off right next to the terminal there. Um, and that is a difficult situation as well. And if people have specific questions about buses and we haven't addressed them here, how can they find out? Um, they can dial our customer service uh, line, which is 1-800-772-2222. And we constantly update our website, which is www.newjerseytransit.com. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, McGee. Alan Weinberg from New Jersey Transit. If I have a few minutes, let me ask some people here who are very patiently waiting to tell me their stories. Where are you trying to get to? I'm trying to get to Boston. Boston. And do you have any hope that there'll be an Amtrak train soon? Hopefully. I'll just wait it out, you know, and just do, do the best I can. You're good-natured about it. Where are you trying to go? Uh, back to Chicago. And you can get there from here? Well, i got to migrate down to LaGuardia somehow. Okay, or over to LaGuardia. Yeah, right, exactly. All right, so how are you going to get to LaGuardia? It's an unknown right now. Okay, you can try a taxi. Yeah. <laughs> Might yeah. be a little expensive. And over here, where are you trying to get to? Brooklyn. Brooklyn, okay. You Montreal. know subway service won't be running yeah. for a while. Okay, and where are you trying to go? Montreal. Montreal. How do you think you're going to get there from here? Eventually, train. Okay, okay. Keep the smile on. <laughs> Hopefully, we'll get the service hey, going soon here. Well, that's the situation here from Penn Station. McGee Hickey, CBS 2 News. Back to you. Sean. All right, McGee, thanks very much. What a joy to press conference.
Right now in progress, uh, okay, apparently some technical difficulty with that. Governor Pataki is addressing the media and uh, we'll obviously have the information for you as soon as we get it, but because of some technical uh, problems, we're not able to take that signal live at the very uh, moment. We'll go back to it should we get it and we'll also pass along the information as soon as it becomes available, but in the interim. Let's talk weather Jeff. because yeah. a lot of people are walking to work and it's going to be another scorcher. Yeah, this is just bad timing or coincidence, or it could have just been the cause of this blackout. It was really hot everywhere. Uh, we have high pressure that's kind of coming up and over the top of that storm that's been with us for about two weeks or so. And as it came up and over, it has gone through Canada, it's gone through the Great Lakes, it's gone through the Northeast. So again, it could have been, we don't know for sure, the cause of the power outage. Obviously overload, obviously everybody using air conditioners yesterday. The first hot day, by the way, in about a uh, little more than a month. The last time we hit 90 degrees was I believe July 4th or July 5th. Uh, currently right now, our temperatures are fairly comfortable, but obviously today as the sun comes up, uh, temperature is going to be rising right now at 75 degrees and humidity is 67%. Wind is northwest right now at 6, trying to drive that drier air in. We have mostly sunny skies out there. It's pretty comfortable up in Port Jervis at 62 degrees there in Tarrytown. It's uh, 69, same thing in Smithtown. Along the Jersey Shore at 73 in the city right now at 75. Here's a look at the satellite and radar, and this is what I'm talking about. Really sunshine wall to wall across the Northeast and in Canada. Also very hot. Everyone's temperatures basically in the 80s or 90s yesterday. And the same story today. We don't have a cold front yet entering the picture. But as you look at the jet stream right there, the cold air is not too far away up in Hudson Bay in Canada. And that's going to be driving its way towards the south. Right now we're to the south of the jet stream, which is the dividing line between hot and cold. We're in the heat, so the heat is on today and tomorrow. Then we will see that trough dig. Cooler air spill down from Canada. Canada, that'll be a cold front. So late on Saturday into Saturday night and early on Sunday, we're probably going to deal with a couple of showers and storms. Cooler and drier, much more comfortable weather on tap for later on Sunday and into Monday and probably stick around on Tuesday as well. But for right now, we're talking lots of heat and humidity, as you can see right there. Here comes that cold front. Again, that'll be here late tomorrow. Uh, could actually uh, spark a couple of showers or thunderstorms during the day, too, tomorrow night, and then cooler and less humid weather will move in after that. I want to talk about Tropical Storm Erica. Right now, it's located in the Gulf of Mexico, has winds of 45 miles an hour. It's racing quickly towards the southern Texas coastline and northern Mexico. Uh, it is right now just a tropical storm. However, as it moves across the Gulf, across the very warm, moist waters, those waters are going to feed the storm, could become a minimal hurricane with winds of 70 to 75 before it makes landfall. That is a possibility. Luckily, it's moving fast. It's going to run out of water, which is its moisture source and its energy source. So when it comes ashore, it won't be particularly strong, but it could have hurricane force winds. So if you have re uh, family or relatives in southern Texas or northern Mexico, might want to keep an eye on that situation. Our situation is simple, mostly sunny today and hot, so slow it down. Upper 80s and low 90s, around 92 in Princeton. Here's your five-day forecast now. Tomorrow will thicken up a little bit, unfortunately, for the weekend. We'll see a little sun, hopefully, in the morning. Showers and storms becoming uh, pretty likely during the day. Saturday night into early on Sunday, and then we're going to see much drier, much more comfortable weather move in later on Sunday and into Monday. It's going to be real nice, but it's going to, again, be a long 24 to 48 hours or so, especially if we don't get all the air conditioning back across the area. Well, we have some good news. I think the air conditioning is just beginning to start humming in Times Square. All right. yep. Mario uh, Bosquez, he's out there, and apparently all the lights are now on in Times Square. We are getting there, Sean. This should definitely put a smile on your beautiful face. Take a look at this. The lights are now shining on Broadway. They came on just a few minutes ago, but in, uh, the, in playing fair journalists here, I should say, they are on on that side of Times Square here at 46th and Broadway. This other side of the street is still waiting to be lit up. However, you will notice that the street lights are now functional. So the front page of the Daily News says blackout. Apparently, for most of Times Square, as you're saying, Sean, it is a blackout no more. We'll continue coverage here in Times Square as we continue to wait for all the lights to come back on. But it's definitely looking like good news right now. Back to you guys. You know, the interesting thing I thought in part was after all hearing all the information we're hearing from the governors and the mayors about, if once you get your power back on, try to do your best to conserve it. Oh, uh, please. You know, Our power whoo, just came the, on here, and the AC is now on. <laughs> 40 billion watts turning through uh, Times Square. It's so, a relief, finally. <laughs> look, I, you know, all those folks that Mara's been talking to all day long looking for something to eat, trying to get back in their hotel rooms. It's good news for those out there. I'm, I'm curious, though, how soon they're going to let them go back in. Hopefully, it'll be immediately. But we'll make sure and see if Mario can get those answers for us. Well, the mayor had spoken, too, by the way, uh, to uh, Carrie Lyon earlier in exclusive 
um, interview, and it said that he was confident Con Ed was going to put the power back on. They were ready to do so, but they needed to do so progressively so they didn't overload the system. So maybe this is part of the plan that we're hopefully seeing. By the way, uh, you know where Mario's located there in Times Square. We're located here at 57th and 11th, and we're told that our power's back on. Hopefully that means a fair portion of the neighborhood surrounding us is also under the same experience. And hopefully uh, the, the restaurants in those areas will open as well. Many of them have to were forced to shut down because when you don't have electricity, you can't go into operation. But that may be the case pretty soon that they'll open. Um, we have a story that's following on these restaurants. Let's take a look at it now. A blackout? What? This is New York. Nothing stops us. Mm -hmm. And we didn't miss a beat last night. We were open 6.30 in the morning to 3.30 in the morning. We were serving the New Yorkers until our, our candles went out. But we, we made it, and we we're uh, uh, like true New Yorkers. What were we serving? We were serving pastrami and corned beef. We were slicing. Uh, we couldn't have no power, so we were slicing it by hand. Our steam table was up. Our bread, we were cutting it by hand. And we're in the process of cleaning up our restaurant right now. And at 6.30, we'll be opening up, and we'll be having a... Uh, a full breakfast and a full lunch and a full dinner. Eggs, which we will have. We will have French toast. We will have bacon. We will have omelets. We will have anything your little heart desires. And if you want a corned beef sandwich, we'll give it to you. And if you want a brisket dinner, we'll give that to you too. Braised pizza never close. We work all night with the candles. The electric only shut off when the gas is working. <laughs> But we don't have any electric, but we're working 24 hours with this light. Most places is closed, so I just come right here. All night, all night, we help the people. Well, folks, a lot of folks are hungry now. Yeah, you know, one thing that I think that with this, this blackout, it, it may have caught a lot of people off guard, but in some cases, with the timing after 9-11, some people were prepared for unexpected situations mm -hmm. where you needed batteries, candles, uh, definitely bottled water. Manhattan Borough President C. Virginia Fields joining us now on the phone with more on her perspective on that. Is that what you're finding to be the case? Absolutely, and I was uh, very pleased from that standpoint because after 9-11, I know my office issued over 100,000 or so brochures about being prepared for any emergencies such as this. And we did find that more people, as I went around yesterday to some of the senior citizen centers, the hospitals, the police precinct. So I was pleased with that. And I was also pleased to see people taking responsibility. You saw citizens out at major uh, intersections helping to direct that traffic because of no traffic light. I was talking to my state assemblyman, Keith Wright, about one this morning, and he had been out on his own corner of 135th Street uh, late last night doing the same thing. So you saw much more of that, and I was uh, very pleased to see that. But needless to say, we're, you know, all very... We're now reporting that uh, clearly that number is uh, improving somewhat, but specific to Manhattan. Um, what are you able to tell us about well, the power what situation? We, what we've heard so far, and I'm still receiving calls, uh, that uh, most of Upper Manhattan has been restored. Uh, I just received calls from Harlem Hospital. They are okay. Everything is in place there. But Metropolitan Hospital, which is at 96th Street and about 1st Avenue, they are still without power. And in totally in New York. That pretty much says it all, right? You There's can, not much else you can do other than find, you know, this, a nice staircase, I suppose, or some place that you feel is safe enough. And no credit checks. Today at the Cherry Hill Triplex on Route 70, so why aren't you here yet? You're watching live Mega Doubler 3, only on CBS 3. Here's another live shot from uh, Manhattan. It is just the most beautiful summer morning. And Lord knows New Yorkers would be enjoying this so much if only the lights were on. It's pretty tough. Uh, there are spotty places around the city where the lights have gone on. I'll tell you, I was. this is a shot of Times Square. I was there last night at 11, and it was completely dark. And Times Square, as you well know, is filled with hotel rooms, and everybody was down on the street. It was very calm. People were very cool. And this is one of those reasons why you love New York City, because this city responded in just such a fantastic way 
to very adverse circumstances. You went home last night, there's no water. I then, you know, it's, it'd be one thing if you could get home, crawl all the way up to your apartment, no matter what floor it was on, and get some sleep. But no water, eh, you know, it's, it's difficult, difficult. But here's the thing. With people from all over the country come to New York for business, for pleasure, or whatever, it's Adele, right? Adele Newman, how are you? Where are you from? From Minneapolis, originally. Now, I mean, people were camped out all night long, assuming that the trains would eventually... And Renee, good morning, Renee. You know, Harry, wait, before you go, I'm surprised to see the cars behind you. Cars, buses, taxis, there's a lot of activity behind you. Yeah, well, let me, let me show you. You know, as we showed earlier, there's some power to the west of uh, Fifth Avenue. You can see the traffic lights. But look, look, Joel, let's look down here. This is Fifth Avenue to the south. There's power straight down from us here. We don't know how extensive it is on one side or, one, uh, or the other of Fifth Avenue. But slowly but surely, the juice is coming back on. And uh, as I say, we've got a lot of good New York stories for you, and we'll tell you some more in a little bit, Renee. All right, Harry, first let's run down some of the numbers of blackout of 2003. The crippling blackout affected some 50 million people, the largest power outage in U.S. history. It was lights out in the Northeast, parts of New England, as far west as Detroit, and some cities in Canada. Power is slowly being restored, and the New York Stock Exchange will be open for regular trading today. The cause of the blackout remains unclear. President Bush says there will be a full inquiry. With so much of New York, though, still blacked out, the mayor is urging people to stay home until things get back to normal. CBS News correspondent... In North Port, Long Island? North Port, Long Island. Do you yeah. know about the shuttle buses right around the corner? No, actually, oh, okay, no. Okay, good. I can do a public <laughs> service here, a little mitzvah. Um, you can take a bus right here at 32nd and 7th, right at the front of Penn Station. There okay. are shuttle buses going to Jamaica Station. All right. And then you can meet other buses that are the substitute for the Long Island Railroad. Oh, all right. There's a very long line for those buses, so oh. I would recommend that you get on those that line right now. Okay. And in about that, four or five hours, you'll get to North Port. <laughs> yeah. Well. Good luck to you. <laughs> Thanks. And where are you trying to get to? The Bronx. The Bronx? Yeah. Okay, you know that subway service won't be running for, for quite a while. Yeah. Okay, so you have some alternative route? Mm, let me see. Yeah, sure. Because since yesterday, I've been, yeah, I've been hanging around, I've been sleeping around. My family have been calling me, you know, something like that. I don't, I don't even like it at all. But anyway, I know. Okay. But I will, I will go home today right now. I need to leave my son. Okay, there are city buses running, so I'll, I'll give you some direction in that in just a few minutes. But we're live here at Penn Station, McGee Hickey, CBS 2 News. Back to you, Sean and Michael. I feel I'm doing a public service now. Now I've been here all night long. Hey, McGee! Getting the information, and my job is to try to get people out of Penn Station. So I'll be all alone in the next hit. <laughs> hey, McGee, we just got some new information, and I'm sure everyone will be glad to know this. We've just learned that the buses are free. If you're catching a bus, that's actually the outside of walking or catching a ferry. It's the only way you can get around, and the buses are free. Just to want to add that to your report. Thank you. And just to let you know that we're, you're not seeing something peculiar, we did actually move into a different studio. Apparently, we've had uh, some type of power issue. We're not certain that it affects any of the surrounding buildings in our area here at 57th and 11th. But just to clear the air and let well, you know, well, just to show you that even though once the power gets restored, it may not come back full throttle. Mm -hmm. So um, be, again, this is an issue where Mayor Bloomberg has said it enough. Governor Pataki has said it. Governor McGreevy has said it. Be patient. That's the key for today. Mm -hmm. This weather report sponsored by Discover Card. It pays to discover. All right, folks, once again, we are outside on the uh, streets surrounding our studios. Normally, we're in, I don't know if we can pan on over. Let me show you. No, everyone can stand. Normally, we're in these massive studios right here in the GM building. Tens of millions of dollars to put this uh, beautiful studio together uh, with high-tech equipment. And this just goes to show when the lights are out, folks, the lights are out. So we pan on over, take a look at our crew, and we're just standing around trying to get a show on, trying to do some business just like everybody else. Here's high tech. You see this, I mean, beat up the smithereens old Ford van? That's where our power is coming from. You bet. Uh, we'd like to thank the Partridge family, by the way, for that van. Let's take a look at the weather picture around the country, everyone. Looks like we're going to see very warm temperatures from the northeast all the way out to Detroit. 
and uh, we're taking a look at Erica as well. This tropical storm, as Julie mentioned, is working its way towards Texas. That is a concern. Wind speeds at this point upwards of 50 miles per hour. We're watching if it will become a low-level hurricane. All right, here's a look at some of the other cities. We'll take an early look at what's going on in your area. Good Friday morning to you. I'm meteorologist Paul Diano. Your exclusive eyewitness weather forecast. Another hot one outside. Hot and humid. The high temperature of 93 degrees. Mostly sunny skies. Yesterday we hit 92. So if you were uncomfortable yesterday, add one more degree to that uncomfort today. 88 degrees tomorrow. Increase in clouds. A cold front arrives late in the day. So a chance of late day thunderstorms. Cooler with some afternoon sunshine on Sunday. High of 85. Partly cloudy Monday and Tuesday. High in the mid 80s. All right, Renee, that's it from here. We're going to continue making sure these lights work. Let's send it back to you. Oh, very good, Dave. Thanks. Up next, why the big blackout caused a major problem with cell phones. CBS 2 News this morning. Back to you. All right. Thank you, Amy. You know, also what's going to be open today, Wall Street. At yep. 930, the bell rings. Or traders are expected to trade fully. Um, they have a backup generator at Wall Street and plan to start the day off with NASDAQ and the uh, tech stocks. Well, we'll see what happens. You know, that's going to be an interesting usual. day trading, if nothing else. Also, we should point out that Con Ed did just contact us and uh, let us know that a third of Con Ed customers have had their power restored, and 85% of uh, LIPA customers in Suffolk County have their power back. So it's a slow process, but apparently uh, things are moving along positively. Yeah, and let's go out to uh, Jim Smith. He's in Chopper 2, right over the Port Authority bus terminal, where we've just learned that the bus rides are free for those who want to catch the bus today. Hey, Jim. Yeah, good morning, Sean, once again. That's right, we're over overhead the uh, bus terminal here at 8th Avenue and 40th Street. Now we can tell you that buses are coming in to the bus terminal. However, uh, they are dropping and picking off people at street level. They are not actually going up into the terminal themselves. You can see a lot of people here gathered along 8th Avenue. This has been the main drop and pick off point for uh, the last several hours now. You can see large crowds uh, wrapping all around sides of the building itself onto 40th Street and then upwards onto 8th Avenue. We can see a lot of buses here over on the right-hand side of your screen. Uh, again, on both sides of 8th Avenue, that's where they've been picking up people and dropping them off. But the good news, once again, if you are planning on taking a bus into the city that normally goes to the bus terminal, it will take you there. Just you'll be dropped off at the street level. And the same thing if you will want to pick up a bus and try to get out of the city that way. Again, uh, you'll have to do everything on the street level. And just be aware, a lot of extra pedestrians in the area, same story like we've seen over at Penn Station. Sean and Michael, back to you. All right, thank you, Jim. And also just to note that the bus uh, schedules have been abbreviated. They mm. have put a priority system to which areas are going to go. Uh, we'll get priority over other areas that would normally have bus schedules. You just got to pack a lot of patience. Vanessa Alfano will have the latest on how that bus schedule breaks down. Maybe if uh, Jim Smith is still there. Jim, are you with us? Yes, I am, Michael. Oh, great. Can we ask you to just widen out your shot? Give us a little... Uh, check of Manhattan, just a little cityscape and see what we can see, uh, even though the sun is up. Cell phones proved to be a lifeline for many people on 9-11, but during the current blackout crisis in the Northeast, they were unreliable at best. So what was different this time around, and why did so many people experience phone problems? Here to help us sort through all of these questions is our AOL online advisor, Regina Lewis, who didn't get a great night's sleep <laughs> because she had to run down 42 flights of steps and... Uh, and uh, spend the night in the lobby of a hotel. Yeah, so, but so I live the to, story. Yeah, we're glad to thank see you. Thank you, thank you. Yesterday, it was very strange. Some people had service, some people did not. Everybody just about very frustrated. What, what's going on? What happened? Two factors and everything seemed to happen at once. The first is power, right? Obviously, that's the entire story here. And most people think, well, my cell phone doesn't need electricity, so what's up with that? but the network that transmits the calls does. So we talked to Sprint late last night and they said, they call it a power to the tower failure. Thousands of those towers went down. They do have backup plans, but it makes them a little less reliable. Couple that with an increase, an immediate increase by mm -hmm. at least 30% of in usage. Everybody trying to make calls at once, not a winning combination. Yeah, and we're not used to that not working necessarily. Yeah, so amazing. people are very, very frustrated. Um, knowing these inherent problems with cell phones, isn't it a good idea to have just a good old-fashioned landline in uh, your house? It's not just a good idea. I think it's a must, and I think this was a wake-up call for a lot of people. The old, you know, $10 Radio Shack dial phone that you plug in. We uh, had one. Yeah. We dug ours out. And it was your friend yesterday. A lot of people now have cordless phones at home. Those take power. So they were without any phone at all. So get a good old-fashioned one. You don't have to use it all the time, but it's a great thing to have. 
All right, if you had a battery-operated laptop that, and you could plug in to, to the wall, could you use the Internet yesterday? Was it up? I don't know. My battery failed. It was up. Um, in fact, it had very little disruption except for when simultaneously, I can speak to the AOL numbers, 400,000 people were missing, but that's because their electricity mm. went out. But if you did have a battery-powered laptop, you could get onto the Internet yesterday. If you find that there's congestion in a local area, this is a great insider trick, switch the access number that you're using. Essentially, you trick your computer into thinking you're in Montana. Oh. Same reason why sometimes long-distance phone calls go through, but you can't call down the street. Okay. Good move in a clutch situation. Yeah, information we could have used yesterday. Yeah. Yes, all right. Uh, one more thing. We hear a lot of... After a kiss, the lights went out. <laughs> and just as the city lost power, this wedding party became energized. Yeah, we went ahead and got married. The lights went out in the church. We're just going to try and make the most of it. With too many people out from Ireland to put it off another day. So once the church service was over, it seemed that not even the luck of the Irish would save the reception. That is, until some Irish resourcefulness went into action. A couple of guys um, from construction business. We got generators up here. We got lights, as you can see. We, got, we just did what we had to do to make it work. One generator on the roof later, the party was on. <laughs> Slattery, CBS 2 News. You know, another place where you expect to see a lot of fun, celebration, hanging out, having fun is on Times Square. Yeah, you would typically expect that. I think right now, Mario uh, Bosquez, who has been down there for some time now, could probably offer up a smile because the lights are beginning to come back on in that area. Good morning, Mario. Good morning, guys. I am smiling. Everyone is smiling in Times Square now. And as people walk by, they have a little bit more of a spring in their step. As we take a look here at 46 and Broadway, we have definitely seen the progression of the activity. The streetlights are now working. In addition, if we take a look over here, you can see that the lights are shining on this side of Times Square. They are flickering, they are moving, and it's really reassuring to a lot of people here. Now we flip over to this side, the other side of the coin of the story. Those people over there are drinking water, they're having their snacks, they're reading newspapers. Signs of a normal existence here. Of course, the newspaper's headline says blackout to rudely remind everyone of the experience they had yesterday, yesterday afternoon, evening, and on into this morning. You want to see some smiling faces? Venganse pa' acá, por favor. Tengo que hablar un poquito de español. I have to speak a little bit of Spanish because our friends here are from? Uh, Spain, Barcelona. Okay, they're from Barcelona. What's your name? Uh, Monse. Berta. So how do you like New York? Uh, Yes, yes. You do like New York, yes. but how did you like the, the electricity being gone? caliente. Caliente, sí. Tuvieron problemas anoche con toda la pérdida de electricidad. Yes. ¿Cómo les fue? Uh, pues uh, el hotel subir andando. They had to climb the stairs. But you know, she uses a body language. She had to climb the stairs to get to the top of your hotel. But everything is okay right now? All right. Okay, see? Okay. We're an international te television station here. Muchas gracias. gracias. Thank you very much. As you can see, people are happier here. The electricity is slowly coming back. The power being restored again to this side of Times Square. The lights are working on this side. We are still waiting for that. But as you can tell, the progression continues. People are snacking, finding their breakfast. In the meantime, I would be desperate for a cup of coffee right now, guys. Can you help me out? Yeah, I'm Mario Bosca's live in Times Square. <laughs> On the upshot, you are first in line for Broadway tickets. <laughs> <laughs> That's true, and there's no line right now. <laughs> I was going to say, first, and by the way, weren't those ladies nice enough to stop by and talk to Mario and that speaking was, the international language of the smile? Yeah, which you know? it translates in any language. You know, um, although the power is being restored, the impact of this blackout is going to be felt for years to come, not to mention the international attention that New York is getting right now. Mm -hmm. Asian papers covering this as well, talking about this being kind of a the, the weakening of the, of the heartbeat of America in mm -hmm. some of the papers. Also locally, we should tell you that uh, the Daily News offers the predictable cover. I mean, the front page is the front page is the front page, right? I mean, the story's going to be the same, but the picture is kind of uh, interesting, talking about the blackout. And uh, on the New York Times, mm -hmm, as well as uh, USA Today also, we're on the cover. A classic picture that I think will stand around for time to come. Thousands and thousands of people walking along the Brooklyn Bridge just trying to get back home because literally the subway system shut down. It has not reopened and, and really no word yet when it will fully be restored. 
All we have is the buses and the ferry. I wonder if we can get a tight shot of this uh, this picture. This is no, we're not able to get a tight shot, but the uh, this is also USA Today. The money section. It's something you'll about never see in the middle of the week. It's Grand Central Terminal, rush Empty. hour. <laughs> And it's empty. It's really, really lost on television, obviously, at this point. But if you could pick up a copy of USA Today, you will really see something. Uh, you know, it had been, the station was evacuated. You know, a train service had come to a stop. And it is just, you know, there are just a few stragglers left behind. But something you'll about never see midweek there. Although, the, Wall Street, the financial district will be busy again today because, obviously, full of traders. Because Wall Street is expected to uh, uh, resume trading at 9.30 when the bell rings. And... Uh, Susan McGinnis has been following that story, and she'll have more on that coming up a little Energy later. trading is going to be big today, It'll be obviously. interesting to see the impact that this has on those energy companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the guys that are coming in and the women that come in to work at Wall Street have to come in to make their living. It's, it's the livelihood of the city, the financial center of the world, perhaps, and they are doing whatever they can to get in. So to that end, we should get you updated at least on, on transit is the best we know it at this point. Airports, we'll get that out of the way soon. We've contacted all of the airports in the area, and right now, we're told they're all operational, but you need patience. Delays. There are going to be a lot of delays. We also know, again, the LIRR is not running as well as the subway uh, systems. Subway trains are not running. You do have bus service and you do have ferries, and the buses are free. Mm -hmm. But let's get a live look outside in Chopper 2. Jim, uh, Jim Smith is outside. What are you over right now? Well, Sean, we're over the New York side of the Holland Tunnel, and uh, keep in mind as you travel to the crossings, uh, to and from either to New Jersey or back into New York, you're going to find a lot of the traffic lights out and at those intersections around the tunnels you're going to have police directing traffic like we're seeing here at the New York side of the Holland Tunnel. These officers are directing traffic once they come out of New Jersey. They pop out on the New York side and try to get them off onto Barrack Street here. Uh, over on the New Jersey side, again, while we're why we're trying to tell people to keep the cars at home, there is over a 45 minute delay for people trying to get into the tunnel coming into New York and of course heading back into New Jersey a lot of congestion here as well along Canal Street about a 30 minute delay and this is all because of all the traffic lights being out of order you have the police officers set up at the main intersections in and around the tunnels themselves but a lot of the streets three four five blocks away there's nobody directing traffic and that is causing extra congestion so again Try to keep the car at home. Use whatever mass transit is available. If you're traveling to and from New Jersey, remember you do have the ferries available. If you can get up to the Port Authority bus terminal, you do have buses available there as well. And if you're traveling from Queens and Brooklyn into the city, do your best. Try to stick with those buses. And if you can, even try to walk over a bridge. That will be your best way to get around this morning. Try to keep the car at home. We've been stressing that all morning long. Sean and Michael, back to you. All right. Thank you, Jim. And of course, Mayor Bloomberg has mentioned that if it's best, just stay at home. In fact, we're waiting. He was supposed to give a start a press conference at 8 o'clock at some mm -hmm. well, 8 o'clock this morning, we assumed. Um, we're going to continue to. Uh, Carrie Lyon is outside City Hall trying to find out the latest details on that press conference, and we'll get it to you as soon as possible. Well, it's likely, too, that the mayor is trying to absorb a lot of information right. from a lot of agencies at one time so that when he comes out there, he's got an answer for virtually every question. There will be a, a lot, lot of questions. Mm -hmm. John Slattery is in Flushing this morning, and uh, hey, good news for Mets fans. Well, the Mets fans, uh, <laughs> they're a little distance away. We can practically sh see Shea Stadium from here, but uh, nobody's thinking about the Mets this morning. These people are all thinking about what to do today. Many of the people who are showing up here in uh, the very center of this uh, large Asian community, the largest outside of Manhattan uh, at, at uh, Main Street here. Uh, these people are wondering many how to get to work uh, just behind us if we can spin around here. The people who typically would be taking the number seven line in order to go into the city uh, are boarding buses here. And if we can come back around this way for just a moment, what we've got here this morning are an awful lot of TA employees who showed up at this subway station for the number seven. And there's nothing to do because, of course, the subways are not running. So what they're doing is they're offering directions to people who show up here anyway. It's also a large bus stop, but they're offering directions and advice to people who would typically take the number seven as to which buses to take. Uh, it's been very orderly, but for the most part, this has looked pretty much like a Sunday morning. Uh, not as many people here uh, as you would find. Most of the stores are still closed. Um, I've seen a, shoot, a few store owners show up. 
uh, to raise the gates, but the stores are still closed because they really can't operate without any electricity. So we've got a lot. Let me ask this lady a question here. Pardon me? English. No English. Let me ask you, sir, about... I don't speak I'm sorry. Okay, thank you. I don't speak Chinese, so we're at a bit of a disadvantage at this, uh, at this moment. But as uh, I don't know if you can see over this gentleman here, but uh, that's where the TA is offering advice to people who are trying to board uh, the number seven, or who would be ordinarily trying to board the number seven and who are instead uh, taking buses. Uh, right down the street, there's a store that uh, sells all types of sundries, and we saw a large amount of trash out in front of the store. It was closed, of course, but the trash comprised almost entirely of packaging for flashlights. They must have uh, sold at least 100 flashlights last night before they closed. And the, uh, the litter, the debris is all out on the street in front of the store, a uh, testament to everybody trying to get some type of light before they went home last night. And uh, as for the coffee question, uh, there's a Dunkin' Donuts around. Pat, we're going to have to uh, interrupt you. We just got word that Mayor Bloomberg, is, he's at the podium, he's speaking now. This morning. Our police officers, firefighters, emergency management personnel, and health professionals have worked incredibly hard to get us through the night safely. And New Yorkers have got together to help and care for each other, as I think it's fair to say they always do. Just to put some numbers to the story, last night, 10,000 police officers patrolled our streets, directing traffic, preventing crime, and helping those in need. They responded to 80,000 911 calls, more than double the average. 3,000 firefighters put out 60 serious fires, up from an average of 10 a night. But almost all of the 60 appear accidental. Many of them, those we've investigated, seem to be from candles. Sadly, one person's life was lost but the great work of the FDNY prevented more people from losing their lives. And I'm also sad to report one firefighter was seriously injured, and we all pray for his uh, speedy recovery. EMS responded to 5,000 calls, 600 more than their record for a 24-hour period. There were over 800 elevator rescues performed by both police and fire during the night. And as you know, the MTA did an admirable job of evacuating everybody safely from the subways. Our city-run hospitals treated people with the professionalism and care that our citizens deserve, despite what was obviously trying circumstances. And our Office of Emergency Management made sure that every city agency worked together from the second the lights went off, just the way the public has a right to expect them to do. In short, New Yorkers showed that the city that burned in the 1970s when facing similar circumstances is now a very different place, a city that has the resiliency to conquer adversity, not succumb to it like we did back then. This morning, all of Staten Island, as well as sections of the Bronx, Brooklyn, Queens, and Manhattan have had the power restored, and Con Ed is working hard to get more areas online. We do ask that people conserve energy today in those areas where power has been returned because that will just make it easier for everybody else. Despite this progress, today we'll also present challenges, however, that we do have to meet. In order to make the day go as smoothly as possible, I'm asking essential city personnel, especially those in the public safety and health care areas, as well as Con Ed, Verizon staffs, and other utility staffs, to report to work this morning. I am asking non-essential city employees to stay at home. Although the financial markets are scheduled to open, New Yorkers should use their best judgment as to whether they go to work. As I said last night, there are worse things than taking a summer Friday off from work. It's important that everyone be aware that while there will be limited bus and ferry service, the subways will not be operating during the day and there will be traffic delays since traffic lights will not be working everywhere. In addition, summer school and related testing will obviously be canceled. As a precautionary measure, the health commissioner has recommended that the beaches do the expulsion of raw sewage into the waters around the city 
remain closed for the day. Pools, however, those with electricity will be open and the Parks Department has over 600 sprinklers in parks throughout the city that they will make sure are turned on for the day. The Office of Emergency Management has cooling centers open, one in every borough, and let me read those to you. If you get uh, overcome or feel you might be overcome by the heat, please have somebody help you get to one of these cooling centers. In the Bronx, 750 Baychester Ave at Truman High School. In Brooklyn, PS 217, 1100 Newkirk Avenue at Coney Island Avenue. In Manhattan, PS 89 at 201 Warren Street. In Queens, at the Townsend Harris High School, 149-11 Melbourne Avenue. And on Staten Island, Pedrita's School, Ocean Terrace and the Staten Island Expressway, 715 Ocean Terrace. The sanitation department is working overtime this morning, moving through the city, collecting garbage, emptying street baskets, and cleaning streets. Obviously, there was a lot of trash last night left in street corners as people congregated. They will do the job that they always do, their professional job, and hopefully by the end of the day or overnight by tomorrow we'll have caught up. They will be making clean, uh, normal pickups. Uh, some of them will be delayed into tomorrow just because the crews are trying to stay up with the litter baskets on the corner at the same time. The forecast for today is that temperatures will once again reach into the mid-90s and power for many of New Yorkers won't be restored until later the day. So please check on your loved ones and the elderly. Anybody that you think might need a helping hand, better to be safe than sorry and make that call or stop by and just say hello. 911 remains operational, but let me remind everybody to please only use it for an emergencies. You can, for an emergency, you can call 311 during the day to get updates. That's the purpose of 311, to relieve 911 of anything other than the most um, uh, urgent calls so that we can make sure that people that in an emergency need police, fire, or ambulance service can get it. If we are patient and understanding, I think we'll all get through today, and uh, the weekend will give us time to put everything right back to order. A couple of things to remember when it's very hot, light clothing, keep the windows open, drink a lot of water. The water supply is safe. Make sure that you check for all perishable foods in your refrigerator. By now, if you have not had electricity, unfortunately, they're probably ruined and better to be safe than sorry. Please don't use them. And you might also make a little special effort for those of you that have pets. They need a lot of water, too. Uh, it's just sad to lose a pet because we forgot to give them water. We'll be happy to take a question or two, sir. Mayor, you, you said that it could take six to eight hours after we see electricity up to see the subways back running. The subways have to reposition trains, make sure their signal lights are all set so that it would take some time. So I would not expect you to have subway service for the evening rush hour. We have no more information than Con Ed has. It appears an event took place up in Canada and that the load shedding that perhaps they should have done was not done in a ways that prevented the New York power grid from having to try to supply power. Uh, that extra demand on the New York grid, which is a two-way agreement so that we get power from them and we need it in an emergency, they get power from us, obviously did not work. And that is one of the things that once we get all of the power back up, we will start focusing on, and Con Ed and every other, you may rest assured, every other power network will focus on, sir. Mr. Mayor, how would you rate the performance of Con Ed so far? Uh, Con Ed, I think, has done as good a job as you could hope for. They shut down without any damage to equipment, and they have uh, brought it back uh, as fast as I think uh, they think they could have done, uh, but doing it in a careful, reasoned manner that doesn't cause more damage. The first thing is to make sure that when you're trying to bring it back, you don't damage equipment that then would put you out for many days. An extra hour here or there you know, uh, with uh, the resulting from extra precautions is probably a good thing, Miss. How long do you think realistically it will take for the city to be back on? You told us twice yesterday that you were hoping... I think everybody had hoped last night that it would have gone somewhat quicker. Uh, Con Ed uh, says that in their connecting with the New Jersey power grid and others, 
Uh, it's, it took longer to uh, even out the voltages and loads than they had thought. Uh, as I pointed out last night, Con Ed isn't a system unto itself in this day and age. All of these systems are intertwined. There are, uh, I gather, some nuclear facilities that went offline that have not come back on, uh, and so they didn't have that power. Uh, and uh, Canada is still a little bit in disarray so that we don't have all the extra hydropower coming from there. But on balance, they are getting it back, and by the end of the day, uh, certainly uh, I think it's a reasonable expectation that everything's coming back. Sir? Mr. Mayor, uh, in other areas like New Jersey, Connecticut, life is a little bit more back to normal. So if people are coming into work still, and they hear you speaking right now on the radio, should they not come into the city then? Really? I think you have to use your judgment. If you live so far away that uh, you just can't get here any reasonable time, probably a good time to take the day off. The world will go on, and uh, on Monday you'll pick up those few things that should have been done and catch up uh, pretty quickly. But um, if you really have to be here, you can get here. If you look at the bridges and the tunnels, traffic is very light. Uh, back there, sir. Are there a few principal lessons that you think have been learned, things the city could maybe do better? Uh, well, I think there are always things that we learn that we can do better, and we will, starting Monday morning, go through every single agency and every th single system and see when, how quickly we responded and whether we could have done a better job. But I think what we did learn was that if you prepare and if you practice and if you work out jointly the protocols of who does what, when you have an emergency, it does work. That's what we showed last night. Things on balance almost all, uh, almost 100 percent did work. There were a handful of minor things that did not. You will always have those. But the great lesson is you have to invest in infrastructure. You have to invest in training. You have to invest in equipment for emergency, surface, uh, uh, emergency service personnel. And you have to invest in good management. We did, and all of those things worked, sir. Uh, what are the circumstances of the fire? Uh, the one fire, uh, I don't think that was one of the uh, suspicious ones. I think it was an accidental yeah. fire. And the person that died, uh, very tragically, was a 40-year-old person who died of a heart attack uh, in the fire, sir. Do you think the city will be entirely back to normal on Monday, or will there be lingering effects? I think by Monday, certainly everything, unless something else would have happened, uh, uh, it's, uh, the expectation is everything certainly would be back to normal. I think by tomorrow, sometime during the day, it will be a pretty normal Saturday. Certainly by Sunday, the sanitation department will have the streets cleaned and uh, everything else will be back to normal. And uh, Monday morning when you come in, if you weren't in, uh, probably some of your clocks won't be set correctly. Miss? I was listening to Canadian Broadcasting this morning and they were saying at 7 o'clock that they still had no idea of the real cause. Uh, why are you so certain that the fault lies in Canada? Oh, I don't think there's any question that the, uh, all the power companies that feel very strongly that it happened in Canada, whether it was somebody that did something wrong or a piece of equipment that failed or a, a lightning strike. Uh, but the, the, you can look at the, um, the systems and see all of a sudden New York was called upon to send an enormous amount of power to Canada, much more than they could uh, handle, and the computers automatically shut down, and then that cascades right down. You have those procedures in place so that you don't damage the equipment. That is the thing that you have to guard from the most, so you don't go for months without a piece of equipment. Going for a day without its use is infinitely preferable, sir. Two more Mr. Mayor, a health question and a client question. How are the patients faring in the city hospitals? Any concerns about blood supply? I hope you can blood supply and the, um, uh, I think uh, we're fine. And uh, yeah, it, it, there was not a, a lot of extra usage of the hospitals. We did not have a bunch of people coming in needing care over and above the average. It was actually a reasonably quiet night in that sense. We did have, as I said, a lot more calls to the police department and to the fire department and to EMS. A lot of those were just people needing help getting up the stairs and that kind of thing. But um, all the basic services performed the way you would want. There was certainly adequate uh, reserves if it called upon. Uh, the biggest problem that the emergency service personnel had was when people were walking home. It was tough to get your equipment through the streets, and uh, that's just something you have to deal with. Last question, Miss. Shouldn't New York be in a situation where an event in Canada can cause a power failure of this magnitude, or would you like him to revisit the way the power grid works? Oh, I don't think there's any question that something happened here that was wrong, and we'd like to fix it. I don't think anybody suggests we don't want to have an agreement with Canada that we get power from them if we need it, 
and I don't think they would do that deal unless we agree to provide power to them when they need it. All of these systems use each other as a backup. It's the only practical ways, and most times it works. This was one of the few times it does not work. The real world is you are constantly sending power back and forth. Otherwise, you'd never have the, the ability to take facilities offline and do maintenance and the kinds of things that, uh, that are required. We don't live in a world, whether it is electricity or communications or all emergency service stuff or financial markets, where anybody stands alone. We are a very interconnected world, and most times that's of great benefit. Every once in a while, it uh, does not work the way it should, and then what you do is make sure that on Monday morning you figure out why and you keep it from happening the next time. So I think that's uh, the good news. Uh, I'll come back to the message we promised to do shortly after arriving at work this morning. There's a couple of things we can recap of what Mayor Bloomberg said in his press conference. Um, one person did die I extremely well. And let me say this to the people of New York as well. There are some tough questions that have to be answered. This should not have happened. We were told it was not going to happen. And at this point, we still don't know where or why this happened and why the safeguards that were supposed to be in place to prevent it from happening again obviously failed, not just across the, Midi the, the Northeast, but in the Midwest and across the province of Ontario as well. We will be demanding answers to those questions, and I'm confident we will get you the answers to those questions. Thank you. Any questions? Yes. The, the independent systems operator in New York State, first of all, doesn't believe it occurred anywhere in New York State, and the reports that it was the Niagara Power Plant are clearly false. The Niagara Power Plant ran throughout this crisis, and in fact, at one point, was providing a significant percentage of the power that was available in New York State. The best information the ISO has at this time is they believe it occurred west of Ontario, in the Midwest, cascaded through Ontario, and then into the Northeast. But beyond that, I don't have any specific information at this point. There's a lot of speculation with that, and I'm sure Governor Pataki's going to get to the bottom of it. That was a press conference where Governor Pataki spoke about uh, just a little bit earlier this morning. Again, just to reiterate, um, Governor Pataki had said that you should go out to the beaches. However, um, we just heard from uh, Mayor Bloomberg at a press conference less than 10 minutes ago where he said it is vital that the Health Commission has just uh, mentioned that the beaches are closed due to the E. coli content. Mm -hmm. We should tell you that because Governor Pataki's remarks came so much earlier mm -hmm. and the way this works with the governor being in Albany and the mayor here in New York City, the mayor's uh, information is likely the most mm -hmm. current because it's the most recent speaker. So I would go certainly at this point with what the mayor says, but we'll bring you any official who has uh, something important to add uh, throughout the morning, throughout the day. And joining us now for that matter on the phone, Nassau County Executive uh, Tom Swazi. Mr. Swazi, thank you for joining us this morning. Good morning, John and Mike. How are you? Good, Good morning. morning. We're well. I How are you? I just want to point out that the Jones Beach is probably A-OK. -okay. There's no problem with E. coli there. This is a problem that's related to the New York City mm -hmm. outfalls and the beaches related to uh, uh, the New York City area and the most western part of the Long Island Sound. It wouldn't affect Jones Beach. Well, thank you very much for clearing that up. So um, go to the Jones Beach. Okay. <laughs> we spoke to the uh, county executive at Suffolk County earlier this morning. He said 85% of the power has been restored in Long Island. What's the situation in Nassau County? Yeah, that 85% represents about 90%, almost 100% in Suffolk up and running, but still here in Nassau County, we're about 60%. The utilities are doing a fantastic job, a LIPA and Keyspan getting the job uh, done over here. But we still have uh, some serious uh, outages here in Nassau County because we have an older system. And uh, that means that our traffic lights are out. So if traffic lights, not all of them, but about 60% of them uh, are up, about 40% are down. When traffic lights are out, intersections are not as safe as they normally would be. We have twice as many police officers on as we normally do helping with the traffic control. And last night, of course, they were making sure that uh, we kept order. But uh, uh, people should not be going to work unless they have to, unless they're emergency service personnel or may somehow related to the utility crisis. We want people to take the day off, if at all possible, or try and work from home. The county offices are going to be uh, just the essential services are going to be operating today. Everybody else is asked to work from home. How are your emergency services holding up, in particular hospitals, doctor's offices? Yeah, we're very happy with the way our emergency, ma emergency management procedures were put into place last night. We contacted all of our hospitals right away, starting early last night. Uh, they have their uh, have an independent generation systems. 
and uh, all of our hospitals are back up and running except with the exception of three i think it is right now uh lij which is part of the con Ed system uh north shore syosset and uh, uh mid island we checked all of our nursing homes they're doing okay uh we've contacted each of our fire departments of course and uh, the emergency offices are still up and running in case anything's necessary our police department has done a fantastic job mm -hmm. along with our volunteer firefighters and auxiliary police helping with traffic control uh, the ma major watchwords for, for the day are conserve energy, don't use any appliances, as the governor said, unless you need to use them. Don't use your dishwasher if you don't have to. Don't use your air conditioner if you don't have to. Don't use any appliances if you don't need to use them, number one. And number two is to be very, very careful regarding traffic because these, street li these traffic lights are not operational. Spend the day at Jones Beach, then. Jo well, listen, <laughs> I want to encourage everybody to go to the Long Island Golf Classic at Eisenhower Park. We oh. have got a seniors golf tournament there today. It's on a county public course, and we'd like to encourage people to go there. Wait a little bit later in the day when the uh, rush hour is over. Yeah. And uh, after 9 o'clock, start heading your over to Eisenhower Park. Mr. Swazi, before we let you go, could you just uh, let us know if you've heard anything at all from the LIRR? We know their service has obviously been suspended yeah, at this they're, point. They're, they're, we've, we've talked with them. They're not ready to go yet. Okay. And you don't know how long it'll be? We don't have the answer for that now. Okay. Thank you very much for joining us this morning. Nassau County Executive uh, Thomas Swazi by phone this morning. Well, we know that uh, Mayor Bloomberg, he, gave, he was speaking at his press conference earlier this morning, he has asked that only essential employees with Con Ed, Verizon, essential employees to the government should come to work. Everyone else, if you're a non-essential employee or if you really don't have to leave home, you should really stay at home if you can. The mm -hmm. mayor addressing the media just moments ago, and our Carrie Lyon's been following this for us all day today. She joins us once again from City Hall. Carrie, good morning. Well, good morning. The mayor. Um, right now, uh, it, it looks like the New Year's Eve celebration. It really does. Everybody trying to figure out what's going on. Remember, so many folks are just trying to get out of these high-rise buildings and just trying to get a breath of fresh air and figure out what's going on. And at this point, remember, this is early uh, in the situation yesterday at 410, and there had been a lot of concern and fear that this may have not been uh, It may have been tariffs related. Right. We do know, at least according to Governor Pataki and Mayor Bloomberg, both have said that this was not tariffs related. It's a big issue, though, because a lot of tough questions are going to have to be answered regarding the uh, this industry that provides the electric service to not only New York, but other areas affected, Canada, Michigan. Um, um, uh, also, um, Connecticut. Sure, the New entire Georgia. eastern seaboard basically yeah. affected by all of this, and neither the governor nor the uh, mayor this morning able to say with certainty just what triggered this cascading effect to happen. And, and at this point, frankly, they don't even seem 100% certain as to where this where all it started. started. We originally thought it happened near the Niagara Falls area. Mm -hmm. uh, apparently, that's not the issue. A question it may have stemmed, it may have started in Ohio may have started in, in Detroit, Michigan. They're just not sure at this point. But the questions are going to be answered. Uh, questions are going to be asked, and hopefully we'll get answers soon. We have John Slattery. He is uh, live and flushing with um, the details of what's happening out in that area. I, the power just, parts of that area has been restored. Hopefully, John, there's power where you are now. There, there is power here. I'm uh, in downtown Flushing at the corner of Roosevelt and Maine. And uh, this is a, a, a big spot for uh, people who commute into the city, both by bus and by subway. This gentleman is Lou DeBello. I got a question. We're live here on Channel 2. Hi, how you doing? A lot of people are coming here this morning. Some people still even going into the subway station. And as they come up, I'm trying to put them on a shuttle bus. We're running shuttle buses from here into Manhattan, going down Fifth Avenue. They see the lights on, because the, the, uh, the lights came on here about, oh, 40 minutes ago. Right, and everybody just assumes the trains are running. But as you know, and I know I heard on the news, they're not going to be running for six to eight hours. Right, so you're giving people directions. I've seen you were crossing the street over to another bus stop to give people directions. Yeah, right? well, you know, people are waiting a long time, so we just want to get them and get them into Manhattan. It was a little quiet up to about a half hour ago, but now it seems to be picking up. So These I think people see the electricity is coming on, so now they figure they'll come in. But uh, only by bus. Right, right. Yeah. Okay. But we got a lot of buses, and uh, actually buses have been leaving with empty seats. And the best news today is the price. Uh, that's right. The buses are free until the subway is up, so I would say probably till 3 or 4 o'clock in the afternoon. But if you take Queen Surface? Queen Surface is charging, unfortunately, oh, but uh, all right, we'll, we'll keep that a secret. Well, thank you very much. You have a good day now. Thank you very much. We, uh, we've we talked to a number of people who have uh, come along here this morning. And Mayor Bloomberg confirmed has died mm -hmm. as a result of this blackout. And obviously, with uh, all of power not having been restored, a lot of people do not have air conditioning. 
there is a need for water and obviously a need for some cooling sensors if you can't go to a friend who has electricity or somewhere that's cool. One of the uh, services they're providing. People who live here tend to a stake in the survival of the city rather than a stake in its destruction. The responsibility Shirley Chisholm. In terms of the mayor of the city of New York and the people in government to come up with employment and training for people so that there won't be so many of these people on the street. Problems to be addressed, but not during the blackout. The police would make nearly 4,000 arrests. The fire department would get some 1,700 false alarms and respond to more than a thousand real ones. All this coming in the summer of 77, the summer of Sam, the summer with the city in its worst financial and economic crisis. Some look back and say the blackout of 77 underlined just how bad things had gotten in New York City. And for the lucky businesses, like one of the only gas stations in this area that got their power on first, they're doing some kind of business. We're blessed with the hindsight of knowing that the lights did come on and the city did come back. Mm. And of course, we're also blessed with seeing that Arnold hasn't aged a bit. <laughs> the years have been kind to Arnold. And that Mayor Beam was really a short guy. <laughs> you know, we look back at that and we think of the number of arrests and the real problems that this city yeah. was going through in 77. Just yeah, there are a lot of people who've come up to me and said, 